Did you hear that? Leave the corners. Leave the gleanings for the poor and the stranger. Then he says, I am the Lord your God. He says in Leviticus 23 and 22, When you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of the field. You hear that? He's talking about those corners again. Leave those corners alone. Neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and for the stranger. Look over at your neighbor and say, The poor and the stranger. Then he says, I am the Lord your God. Deuteronomy 24 and 19. You don't have to turn it if you don't want to. You can if you want to. I'm reading from the King James Version, by the way. Deuteronomy 24 and 19. When thou cuttest down thine harvest in thy field and hast forgot a sheaf in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. Did you hear that? And the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thy hands. Now what we're learning here, we're learning that God is leaving some things He's leaving the corners yeah. for specific people that He has targeted out. Right. The stranger, the fatherless, the poor, and the widow. Amen? Oh. My goodness, this is good if you can see deep into it. Verse 21 of Deuteronomy 24 says, When thou gatherest the grapes of thy vineyard, thou shalt not glean it afterward. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. Now let's look at this. Leave the corners when you gather the harvest. Yeah. Harvest your field in a circle and leave the corners. And I want you to leave them for four different kinds of people that he makes mention of here. The fatherless, the stranger, the widow, and the poor. I began to dig into some of this, which I preached on this years ago. But the word poor there means to be depressed in mind. Did you hear that? How many people ever been depressed in mind? Amen. Oh, some of you lying. Depressed in mind are circumstances. Yeah. It means to be afflicted. Yeah. It means to feel low. Mm. How many people ever felt low before? Right. Now don't get don't we we off our subject. We're talking about going through the valley. Yeah. Oh. Now we're talking about the poor valley. Amen. How many people ever been in the poor valley before? <laughs> How many people lived in the poor valley? Yeah. I think I was raised in the poor valley. Thank God for food stamps. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But afflicted, it don't mean just mean no change to rattle in your pocket, but it also means to be depressed. Amen. Right. It means in mind. I never met so many depressed people in my life. All right. You think, and I'm talking about Christians. Right. And you think they don't even know St. Jesus. I know. Amen. Oh. Depressed and down and gloom and despair. Yeah. Ain't none of y'all know nothing about that, do you? Amen. You ever been there before? What's the next one? The stranger. It means to feel like you don't belong. All right. Anybody ever felt like that before? Yeah. Amen. How many times you ever been in a crowd of people and you felt like you stuck out like a sore thumb? Right. How many times have you felt, doesn't matter who all you're around, you just felt excluded? Mm. That's that stranger valley. That's it. You ever been in that stranger valley before? Amen. I don't even feel like I belong nowhere. Hold on, hold on. What's the next one? Fatherless. It means to be lonely. Anybody ever been lonely before? You gotta walk that lonesome valley. You gotta walk it by yourself. Actually, you don't. Jesus is with you. Right. Amen. Need to rewrite some of them old songs. Fatherless means to be lonely. It means to be bereaved. It means to feel like an orphan. Everybody, anybody in here have been through the valley of loneliness before? Yeah. How many people have been lonely? I ain't gonna look. What's the next one? Widow. It means a desolate place. Yeah. <laughs> it means an empty place. Yeah. You ever been there before? Have you ever been in the valley of emptiness? Have you ever questioned God why? My goodness. Talking about going through the valley. Amen. Desolate. Empty. You ever walked in that place before, Sister Nancy? You see, being a part of these classes of people wasn't something that anyone envied. Amen. 
How many people ever heard somebody pray, God, just send me through a trial. Send, bring a big trial my way, will you? I need to pray harder. I need a little more affliction. How many people ever, Brother Bill, you've been praying that this week? <laughs> I need some more hard times. God, can you just drain my bank account where I don't know where I'm getting my next meal from? Pour it on me, God. Just pour it out on me. Lord, I hope you know this is a demonstration and I don't really want this. Pour it out on me, God. Just put it on me like you never put it on me before. Anybody ever done that? No, we always down for it. Oh, God, deliver me. Set me free. So it wasn't nobody sitting back thinking, you know, I sure wish I was a widow. I sure wish I was a poor person. Yeah. I sure wish I was a beggar. I sure wish I was a fatherless person. I sure wish I was a stranger and an alien. Amen. I got some kid folk that act like aliens. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Different kind of alien. But all of these people, nobody wanted to be them. Nobody prays for the valley. Everybody prays for the mountaintop. Amen. All right. Nobody prays for the valley. So each of these things has some things in common, all but the thing I want us to get this morning in closing. That the most important thing that they had in common here in these scriptures that we read, in these four corners, you might have found some of the poor over here in the right corner. You might have found some of the, the fatherless brother be over here on the left side of the field. On down there, you might have found some of the strangers. You might have found some of the some of the whichever people I left out there. But you find these four the poor people. You find these people in these corners, but that ain't all you'd find. You know what else you'd find? Provision from God. Oh, I wish you'd help me preach this morning. I ain't getting much help. I said you wouldn't just find these people that God described to us, but in these corners, in these valleys. God made sure, don't you touch that. Those people are going to need it when they get in this corner. Amen. God's made sure that He has made a way for you in the valley. He has made provision for you in the valley. When these men were inspired by the Holy Spirit to write down on the tablets the things that God moved upon their spirit to write. He thought, Brother Sleese is going to need Romans 8 and 28. He's going to need this right here. He's going to need to know that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He's going to need to know that all things work together for His good. So you didn't just find these needy people in these corners, but you found God's provision right there where they needed it. And that's what you'll find in the valley. God has made provision for you. Amen. 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 And the scripture we've been hitting on is just one of the thousands that all things work together for you. See, the promises of God, they weren't just for Abraham. That's right. They weren't just for Peter and Paul. They're for you. God's Word is for you. Amen. It's the most personal gift ever given yeah. to mankind. Amen. Right. Amen. His Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. His Word was crucified for you. He sent His Word to heal our disease. He sent His Word, Brother David, to provide for us in the valley. He sent His Word to be provision that we need. God always takes care of us. When we were growing up, we wasn't as poor as some people. We didn't have no, we didn't have a lot of money either. But we sure didn't starve to death. You can go look at it. Amen. We might just had gravy, but thank God for gravy. Amen. Amen. That's true. We might just had flitter bread. Oh, I told people about flitter bread. They didn't know what I was talking about. Yeah. Sometimes that's all we had was flitter bread. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. But thank God for flitter bread. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for beans and taters. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We'd starve to death without them. Thank God for the provision that He makes in the four corners. In every valley that you go through, there is something there that God has provided for you. Just look for it. He's got the table, Brother Sleece. He has prepared it. This is your table right here, man. From Genesis to Revelations. Oh, Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed and He calls His chosen people come and dine. Amen. On His manna He doth feed and supplies our every need. Oh, it is sweet to sup with Jesus all the time. Hallelujah. He's made provision in the valley. That's right. Amen. 
His Word. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. But Brother Billy, I don't like it. I don't care. That's just what His Word says. Amen. My flesh don't like it. Amen. Your flesh will never like it. Oh, but you got to let that spirit man overpower that fleshly man. Amen. And say, instead of sitting here in my ashes and my rubble and complaining and moaning, I will bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Amen. Hallelujah. In all things, everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Hallelujah. Stop. Amen. Stop looking at the enemy that's closing in. Yeah. And start looking at what God has provided. Get your eyes on the table. Yeah. Amen. Get your eyes on what God has provided and realize that He did not bring you to that valley and leave you alone. All right. The shepherd always stays with his sheep. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. If it's storming, the shepherd goes through the storm with the sheep. Yeah. Amen. If it's hailing, the shepherd always goes through the hailstorm with the sheep. Mm -hmm. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's always with you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But the enemy whispers, he's gone. No, he's with me. Amen. Anytime the enemy tells you that something, you always know it's just opposite because all he can do is lie. He can't tell the truth. All right. He's forsaken you. No, he hasn't. That just means I'm where God wants me. Amen. Hallelujah. All things work together for good to them that love God and to the call according to His purpose. That's Amen. you. Amen. That promise is for you today. In the valley, He restores my soul. Someone else this morning have something. <clears throat>